So it appears my two part episode is going to turn into a three, four, maybe five part uh, episode on this desk project. Um, in this episode, I'm gonna walk you through how I went about determining the surface material I was gonna use for the desk. So originally I was going to use sheets of laminate like this, but I really didn't care for any of the colors or designs they had at the hardware store. Plus the prices were pretty high and I would need at least two sheets. You know me, I said I was going to break with convention. I began to wonder if it might be possible to use vinyl tiles like these. After all, this would further my goal of making the desk repairable. So I've managed to damage the desktop of just about every desk or workbench I've ever owned. Usually I either do it with a soldering iron or with a knife or something like that because I do a lot of projects. And one of the great things about using a tile like this is that um, if I were to damage a piece, I could pry it up and put a new one down and, and repair it. Plus, these are like 68 cents a piece, so I decided to buy a few just to go ahead and experiment with. Okay, so you can glue these things down to a top surface, and that's more or less what they're designed for because they're floor tiles. But uh, when I tried to glue them on, especially like strips, onto the side uh, for the trim on a desk, I found that the pieces just wouldn't stick with the glue that is designed for these. And uh, I'm guessing that's because uh, the glue that's designed for these is designed more or less to keep them in place from scooting around and not so much designed uh, to be a permanent adhesive. And it's not like I could just go online and find instructions on how to do this because it's a very unconventional thing to do. So I had to do some experimentation on my own. Various people had suggested different adhesives to solve the problem. So I decided to perform a test with three different types, epoxy, silicone, and contact cement. I glued three strips onto an edge of some scrap board and let them all cure for 24 hours. The next day I tried to pull them off by hand. The good news is that all three glues were strong enough to prevent that. So next I tried prying them off with a screwdriver. With a lot of effort I was able to chip off some pieces of the epoxy version. The same held true with the silicone. However, I was able to remove the entire strip with the contact cement. So that left either of the other two choices for me to work with. Okay, so the next thing I had to do was a larger scale test. Now, I decided to take one of the little triangular shelves that are gonna be hidden up under the desk and use them for an experiment. Now these shelves need to have some kind of surface on them because if you just paint them and you, you put computer equipment on them, over time the computer equipment will stick to the paint. So I definitely wanted to tile them with something. So I thought I'd go ahead and use these and try a full scale experiment with one of the shelves. If I could make these work on the shelf, then I knew they would be suitable for the main desktop of the desk. So the first thing was to cut some strips of vinyl. I decided to use the silicone since I had plenty of it left over from my test. I spread it evenly on the wood and then I spread it evenly on the back of the vinyl strips. I applied the strips to all three shelves and let them set overnight to cure. Once cured, I used a knife to cut off some of the excess and then I followed that up with a file to grind it down to be even with the wood surface. I was decently satisfied with the appearance, so next I went ahead and cut out the top surface pieces and made sure they all lined up. Then it was time for the glue. This is the same glue that didn't work very well for the small strips, but it seems to work okay for larger pieces, which is what it was designed for. Once the wood was coated, it was time to put on the tile. Once the glue set up, I filed down some of the excess tile to get everything to line up. Unfortunately, my cut of the wood was not perfectly straight, and that's the reason there was some overhang. Then I used the file to round off the edges of the tile. After all, if this were the top of a desk, I'd want a nice smooth surface where my wrists would be making contact with the desk. Once I got the shape back, I came back with sandpaper and made it really smooth. And then I cleaned it all up. I'm quite happy with the surface. It looks kind of rough, but it's actually very smooth and glossy feeling. So once I was sure that the vinyl tile would work, I went to a flooring store and looked through their samples, and I picked out a deep blue colored tile and ordered it. I think this will make the top of the desk very beautiful. Once I knew what color the top would be, I had to pick a color for the sides of the desk. So I went back to SketchUp and I played around, and I decided on a dark gray. I've already started applying primer to the desk and should be painting it soon. So here is the finished shelf. and. Uh... This, this is where I'll meet the back of the desk, and uh, this is the front section. Now, uh, this, this would mimic the area where I would be putting my wrists if this were a regular desk. 
and uh, this feels really nice. And uh, you know, some people had questioned that. Well, if you use tiles, uh, you wouldn't be able to write on the desk because the lines or the divisions between the tiles would be a problem with the pen. Now, not that I do a lot of writing, this is going to be a computer desk, but interestingly enough, um, you can see the division between the tiles if you look really closely, but when you run your fingers across it, you really can't even feel it. It is amazing how glossy and smooth the surface is and how well the tiles line up. So I really don't think writing would be a problem even if you wrote over the division uh, between the tiles. So I just wanted to say there's a couple of other advantages uh, to consider on these tiles. Uh, first of all, they're much cheaper than using the regular laminate. I mean, these are about 68 cents a piece. Um, but also, they're easier to bring home. It does not require a pickup truck because they just come in a little box. And uh, I always have to borrow a pickup truck because I don't have one. So that's kind of an important thing. But also, um, the other thing is if you're not an expert and you're prone to making mistakes when you're building something, well, if you happen to screw up one of these tiles while you're building your desk, no big deal, just you know, grab another one. But if you have a hundred dollar sheet of laminate and you screw it up while you're putting it on there, well, then that's going to be a big problem. All right, so that about concludes it for this episode. Uh, hang around in another few days, I'll have part three for you.